The relationship between neighboring Marin City and Sausalito is a unique one. Although the two communities sit only one mile apart, the individuals in these communities live vastly different lives. Sausalito, a 92% white community that prides itself on tourism and restaurants, has an average household income of $200,000. The neighboring Marin City, a historically redlined community, has a population of 60% people of color and an average household income of $88,000. For years, a single elementary school was home to Sausalito and Marin City children called Bayside MLK. But everything changed when an overflow of families from Sausalito who were seeking a better school created a new charter called Willow Creek Academy. Immediately it achieved great success. Great faculty, students, and a supportive community contributed to the school becoming beloved by Sausalito families. Willow Creek grew with extreme success, eventually having more than 400 students. It scores a 61 on the ethnic diversity scale out of 100, only being 15 points behind the country's most diverse school. Compare this to Marin City, which is 104 students of color out of 109 students, which, besides being illegal, raised serious concerns regarding the welfare of the students. In short, MLK was segregated and Willow Creek was not. MLK was facing rapid turnovers of staff and mismanaged funds. The Sausalito Marin City School District is under basic aid, which means its funds come entirely out of property taxes. Sausalito's high property taxes led to the district receiving $8.1 million in net revenue in 2020. The supposedly underfunded MLK had a per pupil spending of $52,000, while the supposedly overfunded Willow Creek only spent $11,000. Despite MLK receiving more funding, more than three quarters of the students failed to meet reading and math standards, as opposed to Willow Creek, where the large majority of the students were. In response, the Attorney General of California sent the first desegregation order in 50 years to this district, telling the school board that they need to desegregate the district. After a year discussion about how the district should respond to the order, they decided to unify the two schools, creating two new schools under the same name, Bayside MLK. The old Willow Creek campus became the TK through five school and the old MLK campus became the middle school. In theory, this seemed like a good idea, but in practice, many issues have arisen. When we bought a home, we were really looking for schools. So we found Willow Creek, which had really good ratings. So we bought a place here, very excited. And a few months after that, we found out that there was a desegregation order and Willow Creek was closing. <laughs> and I started getting involved in board meetings and going and trying to find out like what was happening. Why was there one district with such a good school and another school that seemed to be like consistently failing students. And it feels like the more I started digging, the more it started feeling like politically correctness and social justice gotten really wrong. It felt very much like a hostile takeover. It was a progressive series of moves that um, made that clear because of the way the um, Attorney General's investigation was handled. It excluded uh, representatives of Willow Creek entirely. That secrecy um, made it clear that there wasn't going to be an equitable um, outcome. There was not a bridging kind of um, experience within the teachers and staff. So I know from that perspective, it felt very much like not a unification and, and more of a takeover. In the past year, there's been 14 resignations or layoffs of staff members 1.6 million dollars in budget cuts and another 446 thousand dollars in budget cuts planned for the 2022-2023 school year while some of these cuts are due to expired grants others have a more personal impact on the teachers the budget community plans on cutting the contract of the garden coordinator for both schools a seventh and eighth grade science teacher said the garden was deeply integrated into the core curriculum of the science program and was a springboard for the students future career directions in climate change, green energy, and the environment. The cuts also include eliminating a student success coach and reducing a physical education teacher's hours by a third. A full-time world education position would also be changed into a part-time English language development teacher. Additionally, the schools had to reduce out-of-district students. So with such high property taxes in the local area, why is the Sausalito Marin City School District seeing so many budget cuts? We built a budget for a school we'd never operated. 
So when you do that, you have to make a lot of assumptions. Uh, normally in school finance, you can, you can look back to last year and say, well, it cost us that much last year. It's reasonable to assume it's going to cost us this much next year. And that meant that we actually had no margin for error. Our assumptions had to be 100% accurate. And they weren't. It's challenging because there haven't apparently been um, controls or much oversight in the budget from the district superintendent and uh, CBO and, and whoever's managing the funds with the, the board on is, is ultimately responsible. There was a team that worked on finances and planning what the finances were going to look like and the recommendations they, were, they gave to the school. They were telling them, you're going to have money issues with the way you're planning it. It's not going to work out. And the district kind of told them, like, no, you're wrong. It is going to work out. They knew before unification that financially it was not going to work the way they were planning it. We adopted a budget in June that had a $1.3 million deficit. The $1.3 we knew about $300,000 in additional cuts, $1.6 total. Um, and that was hard. I think there was a lot of hope that we'd get additional revenue this year that to date hasn't materialized. And so maybe... It could have been a little softer, like we could have accounted for that 300000 Our Things are great from a resource standpoint. People, the classrooms are not well resourced right now, and we're going to cut more. And that really concerns me for the experience that our kids are going to have in school. We've been given the task of, the, um, of cutting another 300 recently. The option put in front of us is only teacher salaries. Un currently open, unfilled teacher salaries are the only place that we can cut. Um, and that scares me. I really think the problems are administratively, the way they're managing the money, the decisions they're making. I, I think the problems are at the top, not at the student level. The feedback that, that I would gotten like from my daughter and from other kids was that it was a net net positive. Um, meeting new kids and having new friends. Both in the elementary school and the middle school, the students are happy. Like, the problems are not with the kids and it's not inside the classroom. I like that I get to meet a lot of new people and make new friends because before in Willow Creek, it's usually just like the same people moving on in the grades. It's better than last year because there's, last year it was, I couldn't see that much brown and this year there's, way more than what I saw last year. I'm happier this year because I have more friends here and I like the teachers. Having new friends means having more fun. Mm -hmm.